So today I'm going to be showing how to install the Android SDK on a Mac. If you have Windows or Linux, you can probably follow most of this, but you might want to find another article or video to help you out for that. So we're going to need three things. First, we're going to need the JDK, which is the Java programming language. So search for JDK download. And this is it. Version 8 is the latest. Accept the license and download the version for your computer. Uh, I already have this downloaded, so I'm not going to click it. Next thing we need is the Android SDK. And it's this big button here. I have that downloaded already too. And the last thing is IntelliJ. There are actually several different editors you can use, but, but IntelliJ is the most optimized for new versions of Android. And it's also what I use at work. So they have a free version here that you can download. So I'm not going to click that either. I also have that downloaded, but those are the three things you need. So let's install these all. The first one is the JDK. And run this, click through the installer. You're going to need your administrator password. And great, we're done with that. So the next thing is the Android SDK. So if you downloaded it with Safari, it's already unzipped. If not, you'll have to unzip the zip file and you'll get this folder. And then you go into SDK in Tools and run this Android program. And this program lets you download more stuff. The Android SDK has a ton of different components that you use for different things. So it's going to pre-check some boxes of things it thinks you should download. So you should leave all that checked. And then go down to the bottom. We need a couple additional things. We need the Android support repository and the Google repository. And at the bottom, the Intel emulator accelerator. Because without that, the emulator is going to run really slowly. So with all that stuff selected, hit install. And this dialog's kind of tricky. You have to select the first license and hit accept, and then scroll down and you'll see some other categories. You've got to go to each one of them and hit accept. And that's the last one. Then hit install and let this stuff download. All right, so it looks like it's done. That took about 45 minutes. So next we have to go install the emulator accelerator. So I'm gonna go back to this folder and go back to SDK, Extras, Intel, Hardware Accelerator Manager, and I'm using the latest Mac OS, so I'll use this first one. And we need to run and install this installer. And this will need your administrator password too. All right, so we're done with that. So the next step is to make an emulator. So the screen to do that is kind of big, so I actually have to reconfigure my monitor back in just a second. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to Tools and Manage AVDs. And here I'll create a new emulator. So I usually give it a name last. So here you can pick the screen size of your emulator. 
you can try different sizes. I usually pick this Nexus S one because it's not too big. If you use some of these newer phones, they have huge screens on your laptop because they are high resolution. So you can play around with these and try different ones. You can even make multiple emulators if you want. Uh, I'm going to use the Nexus S. Then for target, you'll normally want to choose the latest Android version. So 5.0 is what it's at for me right now. And then CPU, this one's important. You want to choose Intel Atom. If you choose something else, then it's not going to use the accelerated emulator. Skin, I usually use this one with hardware controls. And I usually put 512 for the SD card size. And lastly, you want to check this use host GPU. That's needed to turn on the emulator accelerator also. And all the other settings should be fine as they are. So now I'm going to give it a name that matches what I have here. So I'll call my Nexus S Android 5.0. And you can't use spaces in the name, so I put underscores. And then hit OK. And after a minute, it'll say that it's done. So now that we're done with that, I'm going to switch my monitor size back. OK, so before we start up IntelliJ, I'm going to choose this new emulator we just created and start it. And now that it's running, I'll drag up and unlock the screen and click through these buttons. Okay. So there it is. So while your emulator is running, you need to leave these other windows open. If you close them, it can either shut down or cause the emulator to screw up. So I'm just going to hide that window. So the last part is IntelliJ. So here's the download that we got earlier. And I'm just going to drag this to the application folder. I already have an older version, so I'm just going to replace it. And now we're done with that. So now let's start it up. And we'll create a new project to try it out. I'm going to make an Android Gradle module. And let's just call this test app. And I'm going to make it an empty activity. And just leave everything else as it is. So this will download a few more things. So then once everything settles down, I'm going to hit this play button up here. And it's going to ask where we want to run it. So if our emulator is running, we should see it here. So I'll hit OK. And then switch over to the emulator. And we should see it start up here. Great. So it looks like everything's set up correctly. So if you got that working, then you can go back to one of my other videos and uh, make an app that actually does something. I'll see you then. Ah, I wanted to also show how you can run the app on your own phone if you have one. So I'm just going to demonstrate this on the emulator. But if you have your own phone that you want to use, you can first plug it in with USB to your computer. And then on your phone, go to the Settings app. 
and scroll down to the bottom of the settings, you should see developer options. If you have a really old phone, it might not be at the bottom. It might be uh, farther up inside of the apps menu. But for newer phones, it'll be in developer options at the bottom. And you want to make sure this switch is turned on. And then scroll down and look for USB debugging and turn that on as well. And then you probably need to unplug and replug your phone back into the computer. And it'll probably give you a little message asking if you want to trust the computer. So hit OK to that. And then after that, when you click the play button in IntelliJ, it should show your phone in the list of possible targets. So you can just select it and it'll run the app on your actual phone.